patients who have tumors that are located in an area of the brain that we call an eloquent area, in or near that, we have to worry about disrupting a function that's going to be very noticeable to them if they lose it. So that could be language interpretation or actually speaking. It could be motor function. Um, visual function is something also that we're concerned about um, if we're operating in that you know, occipital region or uh, in another area where some of the connecting fibers may be affected. So we can get more information about the relation of the tumor to the surrounding functional anatomy, we call it, by doing some special imaging techniques. <clears throat> and they all involve MRI. So one of them is functional MRI, where we can look at the activations of that particular function uh, mapped onto the uh, brain image. We also can do magnetoencephalography, or MEG, which allows us to look at that same kind of thing using a different type of technology. And in my opinion, a combination of those two things can be helpful in predicting what you may find in the operating room. But that alone is not enough, at least not at this point. <clears throat> and so in the operating room, we can do awake surgeries. Um, and I do a lot of that to map out where that function is located. Um, also, you can do some mapping with the patients asleep using some neurophysiologic monitoring. And the point of all of that is, as I mentioned earlier, to try to maximize the amount of tumor that you're going to get out because that helps improve outcomes, but at the same time trying to preserve that function because we know that patients who are in better shape at any point in time during their course are going to have better outcomes overall. So you don't want to just take out a tumor and then someone's not moving very well on that other side you want to try to take out that tumor and keep them able to take care of themselves and be independent. The patient is awake uh, for testing of the area that's exposed um, during the surgery and that allows me to see where those functions are located in the brain in relation to the tumor because I want to approach the tumor and remove it in the areas that are safe. So if I find that there's function right involved with the tumor, I would elect not to take that part out. Um, or there have been occasions where I really didn't think it was safe to remove the tumor and did a, uh, a biopsy or an excisional biopsy instead. Or sometimes I've removed the majority of it, but I left a certain portion because it was getting near the eloquent area and I didn't want to take that from the patient. And if I get no responses and there's no result of my stimulating that area, then that area theoretically should be okay to work in. Yes, or if we're doing language, for example, um, I'm working in conjunction, we bring in the um, neuropsychology folks that help us do preoperative testing and they help us with the language testing and they're showing patients words and cards and things like that. And then we're coordinating the efforts where I'm stimulating and it's timed uh, so that I can ascertain whether there's uh, some language function in that area.